Welcome to the Our Dad Stamps YouTube channel. My name's Pete West and like a lot of people my age, I started collecting stamps as a child, encouraged by my father who was an avid collector. 20 years ago I inherited his collection and at the same time I also inherited my wife's dad's collection. Since then I've been buying and selling stamps through my online stores at Del Camp and eBay under the name Our Dad Stamps and this has allowed me to grow the collection into what you see behind me. With these videos, I want to share some stories and information that I've learned about stamps and stamp collecting. I hope you enjoy them. And if you do, don't forget to click on the like button and subscribe to get regular updates on new content. Hello again from Our Dad Stamps. Recently, I've had quite a few requests from people asking about how they can tell whether the stamp they've got is genuine or not. So I thought I'd do today's podcasts on forgeries and how to spot them. Whilst even experts get caught out sometimes, there's certain simple things you can do to safeguard yourself against being sold a dud. And hopefully after this podcast you'll have a better idea of what to look for. Before I start getting into the detail, there's two golden rules that you should bear in mind when buying stamps. The first one is, if a deal looks too good to be true, then it probably is, and I would be very, very wary. The second rule is, if you're gonna spend a lot of money on stamps, and your idea of a lot of money may be different from other people's idea of a lot of money, but for mine, certainly anything over a hundred pound for a single stamp, I would only buy it from a reputable dealer. That way you have safeguards if it later turns out to be a forgery or a fake. In most cases, because you're buying from a reputable dealer, it won't turn out to be a forgery or a fake. So with those two things to bear in mind, let's get started on what you can look for. The two most common forgeries that occur are making a mint stamp look as though it's been franked and making a frank stamp look as though it's mint. Now that sounds daft, but it occurs especially when certain stamps are worth a lot more mint than they are used, or a lot more used than they are mint. Most cases, mint stamps are worth more money than used stamps. Uh, but in some cases, especially in small commonwealth countries with high value stamps that were rarely used for postage, then sometimes the cancelled stamp is worth more than the mint one. And as you can imagine, that really is quite easy to forge, even for the amateur forger. But it will be pretty obvious. All you need to do is put a black smudge on the side of the stamp and pretend it's used. The golden rule here is, if you are buying used stamps, is to buy one with a recognisable circular date stamp. They are the ones that command the value and they are obviously more likely to be genuine. As I said, if it's got a little black smudge on it, or another easy one to do is an arc of a circle in the corner of the stamp, which is pretty meaningless, then you need to beware and you know look very closely at it, especially if it's a, an expensive stamp. I've actually got a few of those in my collection. Recently, I bought a large selection of the Victory Omnibus stamps in a proper album, uh, purported to be all used. But when I looked closely at them, some of the cancels were really dubious. And as I've just described, they were merely an arc in the corner of the stamp. And when I looked even more closely, the forger hadn't even bothered to uh, stick the stamp on anything. So there was full gum on the back of the stamp. I've still got those stamps. It wasn't something I paid a lot of money for. And I was actually only buying the collection to fill in gaps for what I already had. But it shows you how easy it is to commit this fraud and you have to be careful. That one I got caught out because I was buying a whole load of stamps and it was in the middle of a bulk purchase. And that's where you need to be careful. But uh, by the same token, if you're buying a bulk load of stamps, then an odd one that's not right isn't too much of a problem. Just beware. Now, there are more difficult postmarks to look out for. You have to be very careful, as I said, when you're buying a stamp that you know is worth a lot more used than it is mint. You need to be especially careful. And with modern printing techniques and modern technology, 
it is perfectly possible to print a circular date stamp on top of genuine stamp using an inkjet printer. And to the untrained eye, that could pass off quite easily as a proper cancel. But there are telltale signs. If you look very, very closely, the ink from an inkjet printer tends to bleed slightly into the stamp, so it won't be as clear as the proper ink used by the postal service. It's also made up of cyan, magenta and yellow. It's a composite of different colours. And if you look very, very closely, you can often see around the edges of the print, these colours. So if you are going to buy a used stamp without a certificate or without buying it from a recognised dealer, be very, very careful and look out for these possible forgeries. There are a special selection of used stamps known as the Madame Joseph forgeries. And these were created in the 1920s, I believe. Woodblock cancellations were made to identically copy proper cancellations. And it was very, very difficult to tell the difference between one of those and a genuine postmark. The thing that gave it away was because it was carved in woodblock, all the dates were the same. It's something you need to look up and they are well documented and well recorded which ones were forged by this process. But again, if you're paying a lot of money, then do a lot of research on that stamp and a lot of research on the, the forgeries that are out there just to be on the safe side. Looking at stamps the other way around then, if you've got a franc stamp and you want to make it look like a mint stamp, there are certain things that the forger will try and do. The first is to try and find a stamp that's been through the system that you can't see the cancellation. These do happen, particularly on the more modern stamps. And recently, I'm forever getting post that has got no cancellation on it at all. I'm shocked at the, the postal services throughout the world that don't seem to care about that anymore because it's the easiest thing in the world to take that stamp off and just glue it down onto a new letter. But anyway, going back to more valuable stamps, there are lots of chemical processes out there that will help remove a cancellation mark, but all of them damage the stamp to a certain extent. And you need to look out for telltale signs. Things like bleaching of the stamp in certain areas or faded color. And a lot of them, if you look closely, the color that was underneath the original postmark is a lighter color than the actual color of the stamp. So if you look very, very careful, it's often possible to see where the date stamp was originally. The other thing that happens a lot is once you've got rid of the postmark, you need to add gum to the stamp. And again, this is apparently quite a simple process. Once you get yourself set up in the business, it's easy to either paint or spray new gum on the back of a stamp. So you need to beware for stamps that have been re-gummed. And there are clues that will help you see whether a stamp has been regummed or not. Now, I've very possibly got stamps in my collection that have been regummed, but if the stamp is only worth five or 10 pound, it's not something I'm gonna spend hours trying to find out. However, if I was buying a, a mint stamp for hundreds, then certainly I would take the trouble to uh, look into this. And as I've said before, if I was paying that sort of money, I would buy it from a reputable dealer. So avoiding that problem anyway. But things to look out for for regum stamp is if you look up very, very closely under a microscope, you can see that the fibres around the, the perforations will have gum on them. Now, if the stamp was originally gummed when it was on the sheet, as they all are, then the gum doesn't go onto the fibres. But if you try and add gum to it after the stamp has been removed from the sheet, then the small fibres on the edge of the perforation will have that gum on them. And it's a telltale sign. And you can actually tell this by running your finger along the edge of the stamp, because ones that have been re-gummed will have a stiffer, sharper edge to them than the originals. You know, if it was originally gummed and torn off, then it's gonna be a bit softer around the edges. And if you can lightly run your finger along the perforations, you can often tell whether it's been regummed or whether it was an original stamp. So that's another thing to look out for. Another problem with forgeries is overprints. Once again, overprints are very easy to forge. You get the original stamp and 
at its basic level, a John Ball printing set and stamp the overprint over the top. And as I've said before, it's quite easy with an inkjet printer to make it up with the same font to look like an original overprint. But as with the cancellations, if it's done with an inkjet printer, then by looking very, very closely at the ink and at the edges of the ink, you can probably tell whether it's been done that way or not. The other thing you need to do with overprints is you need to do some research. As I've said several times, and I will continue saying it, if you're spending a lot of money on a single stamp, you need to be a lot more careful. So it's worth doing your research first. And on almost every stamp now, somewhere on the internet, you will be able to find what the typeface looks like for the genuine overprint and compare it with the one you've got. A lot of people who are creating these forgeries really don't look at the detail. Sometimes it's very hard to match up exactly the same typeface. You know, and it's little details like how thin a stroke is on the T or how wide the gap is in the A. So you need to be very, very careful and you need to look closely. But again, most forged overprints can be traced and can be found as long as you know what the original looks like. And in this day and age, it's quite easy to find an image of a genuine original on the internet. So there really is no excuse. The thing to be wary of is when you see one on auction and especially on an online auction and you get carried away and before you know it, you've paid too much for a forged stamp. So the answer is do your research and look very, very closely before jumping in. Another possible forgery to look out for which I talked about when I did the podcast on the five pound orange, is removing a fiscal cancellation and making it look like a postal cancellation. A lot of stamps that have dual purpose that could be used for, uh, for revenue as well as for postage, they're worth far less with the revenue cancellation on it than they are with a postal cancellation. So people have been known to remove the fiscal cancellation and make it look like it has a postal cancellation. This can be done in several ways. If the fiscal cancellation is actually a print cancellation, then as we've said before, chemically it can be removed, but it always leaves a lighter color of the stamp underneath and can generally be seen where it was originally. But some fiscal stamps are canceled in pen with just a signature over the top. And that's possibly easier to remove. It always leaves a telltale sign behind in the form of faint white lines where the, the pen was. And in fact, if you look under ultraviolet light, this shows up quite clearly. So that's something to bear in mind. And then the postal cancellation, the same things apply. You need to make sure it's a genuine cancellation. You need to make sure it's not been done by printer ink. You need to make sure it's not just a smudge in the corner. So all those things are things to be wary of. As I've said before, when you're spending a lot of money on a stamp, you need to be very, very careful. You need to do your research. So before you buy it, have a look at what is known about that stamp. Often you can find references to known forgeries, so you can look out for them. With the older British Victorian stamps, the check letters in the corner are quite often the same for the forgeries, so you know which check letters to be wary of. Certain stamps are more prone to be forged than others, and again, with a bit of research, you'll be able to find out the telltale signs to look for. The message is, be careful, there are forgeries out there, but there are certain things you can do to safeguard yourself and to be a bit more careful. There's one last category I want to talk about, which I hadn't appreciated when I first started collecting stamps, but apparently is reasonably easy to do, although I still can't quite see how it is. And, and that's to do with watermarks. You can make a genuine stamp look like it has an inverted watermark relatively easy. And it comes about by actually splicing the stamp in half. Now, I find that really difficult. I don't under quite understand how you can do that without damaging the stamp. But apparently it's possible to remove the front part of a stamp. If you imagine you get a stamp, in a lot of cases, it's not a particularly valuable stamp in its normal condition, but it is valuable if the watermark is inverted. So you can get hold of two normal stamps, take the back off one and take the front off the other one, 
and put the two together with the watermark upside down. Now there's a few telltale signs with this. The first is, as I've intimated, it's very, very difficult to cut a stamp in half that way, but it isn't quite so difficult to remove the front part of it. And so once you put the two bits together, the stamp will generally be thicker than the original stamp. The second thing to look out for is it's also quite difficult to match up the perforations because if you've got one normal stamp and one upside down, the perforations have got to be exactly in the right place and exactly match up. Otherwise, it's pretty obvious. So whilst these fakes and forgeries do occur, and they are quite dangerous if you, know, if you don't spot it, they are relatively easy to spot. Although sometimes you do have to look very, very closely at, at the perforations and just look out for anything that doesn't seem to be quite right. One further thing to look out for when you're paying a lot of money for a stamp, and this, uh, I'm not sure whether this category comes under the heading of forgeries or not, but it's repaired stamps. It's relatively easy to repair a tear on a stamp. If the tear overlaps, then you can glue it back together again and pass it off as a, as a whole stamp. But that will usually show up with a line down the stamps, particularly if you hold it up to the light. But other things to look out for is repaired thins. And there are varying levels of repair that goes on. It's something that people take a lot of care about it and know what they're doing. It can be almost invisible. And some would argue that that's not a problem because the stamps look like original. Uh, all you've done is carry out a repair. But in the world of stamps, we all want the stamp as it is, not as it was originally. So it's something to bear in mind and something to look out for. And telltale signs are different patches of colour on the back of the stamp. If it's been thinned at the back, then that bit will need to be filled in at some point with some sort of mixture. Matching that mixture up with the original paper type, particularly on an older stamp, is very, very difficult. And in any case, the new mixture will not look the same colour as the old paper. So you can often tell these by a, a different colour patch on the back of the stamp. And again, if you hold it up to strong light, you can probably see this through the stamp. It's something to be wary of, it's something to look out for. I've got some stamps from, from Spain, and for a while the fiscal cancellation on Spanish stamps was to punch a hole in the stamp. And I've got a couple of stamps that have been repaired in an effort to cover up this hole, because as, as I've said before, the punched hole stamps are worth much, much less than the original proper stamp, particularly if the original is mint. And so they've gone to the trouble of filling in the stamp from the back, but obviously they've got to match up the front as well. And that, particularly on this one, is where it gets difficult. And I've got two examples. One is quite good. One is so bad, a child with no knowledge of stamps could find it. But anyway, look closely at the stamp, particularly from the back of the stamp, and hold it up to the light. That will tell you an awful lot of stories about what's gone on. OK, so that just about rounds up my quick summary of forgeries. I haven't gone into the details of the master forgers who are well known and could have a whole story written about them or told about them individually. There are also many examples of forgeries that have gone unnoticed for some time and are now being found out. So maybe it's a subject for another podcast later on. But at this stage, all I wanted to do was to highlight things that you can look out for yourself and give yourself a bit of protection when buying stamps. And I'll go back to the two mantras. Firstly, if it looks too good to be true, then it probably is. And secondly, if you're going to spend a lot of money on stamp, then buy it from a reputable dealer. The problem is these days that places like eBay, Hipstamp, Delcamp make it so easy for you to look online, buy a stamp and wait for it in the post. It's very, very difficult to look properly at a stamp online. And I've said it on previous podcasts, I would have to think very, very long and hard to spend more than, probably more than £100 on a single stamp online. I would want to look at that stamp properly first before I spent the money. And when you're spending that sort of money, then you need to find out everything you can about that stamp before you go and look at it, before you go and buy it. So there we have it. Don't jump into what looks like a good deal because you'll probably get stung. Buy your stamps from a reputable dealer. 
when you're buying cheap stamps, that's a different matter. If you spend five pound and it turns out to be a forged stamp, it's annoying, but it's not the end of the world. If you spend 500 pound and you find out it's a forged stamp, then that's more than a little annoying. There's just one more thing I'd like to add before I go. And that's a website that you might find useful. It's called stampforgeries.com. And it basically lists country by country all the known uh, forgeries that exist. It's by no means comprehensive. There's certainly some that I know of that are missing, but it's a very good reference source. And there's pictures of the real stamp alongside the forgeries. So well worth a look. I'll put a link in the notes below and uh, give it a try. So be careful out there. Thank you for listening. And uh, I'll see you again in two weeks time on our Dad Stamps podcast. Thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable. Don't forget you can visit my online stores at eBay and Dell Camp under the name of Our Dad Stamps, where I have over 2,000 items for sale. Please join us again in two weeks' time for another edition of Our Dad Stamps podcast.